She embodies her own style of feminism, one that endorses looking, acting, and dressing sexy, thank God. But she also believes in hard work and achievement. And uh, she's a best-selling author. She's editor of one of the largest selling magazines in the country, magazines in the country, and the number one young women's magazine in the world. Tonight, my good friend, Helen Gurley Brown. Helen, welcome to the show. Roger, I'm happy to be here. Your husband was here a few nights ago, David Brown. I was so jealous that I pounded and pounded. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, he said you would come on the show, and I'm just delighted that you uh, did. We had a great conversation. He's a very wise man. You've been married to him for 30 years? 35. 35 years. Mm -hmm. How did that work out? I mean, do <laughs> you, you guys fight? <laughs> well, I, mean, I guess uh, we're I mean, okay. I mean, uh, did you ever say, that's it, I'm finished with you, or did he ever say that? Roger, I didn't marry till I was 36, and I sort of knew instantly that I would never find anybody better. So when I get mad enough to kill him, which I do occasionally, I think, kiddo, who are you fooling? You'll never find another him. You would be out on the streets, lonely, desperate, and David would be involved with somebody else in 15 minutes. So when people <laughs> ask, how has our marriage stayed together so successfully, I say, it's because I always knew what I had and I haven't done anything silly. Well, if, uh, who, who makes up first? Do you powder, does he powder, or how do you handle that? I mean. David gives tantrums. You know the joke about people having ulcers. No, they don't have them, they give them. Well, David doesn't have tantrums. He's very even keeled, but he gives them occasionally. Is and right? after you've had a tantrum, who do you suppose goes and apologizes? The tantrum me, of course, the person yeah. who had one. So it's, it's I, it's me who goes crawling into his den, virtually on my hands and knees, and saying, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Never mind that you brought it on. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I had person. a good friend who say, said to men that the, uh, th the, they can make a successful marriage as long as they're willing to say three words, I was wrong. But what you're saying is it's good for the woman to say I was wrong. Well, do you think it's always the man who's wrong? I think frequently it is. It is us. As I go through life, I find very few people can ever say I was wrong about anything, and it That's actually true. works miracles. You could get away with murder if you go, not that you want to, but you go in and say, look, I was such an A-H, as in bad <laughs> word, <laughs> and I'm so sorry. I didn't know what I was doing. You right. were right. I was wrong. It can make you virtually the most popular girl or man in the world. Is a good woman hard to f harder to find than a good man? We've heard that both ways. What's your opinion after all these years of studying this? Is it easier to find a good woman or easier to find oh, a good man? Roger, all people, girls, boys, men, women, are so flawed. All of us have a flaw that's big enough to drive a Ford truck through. Therefore, to say, are there more good women or are there more good men or are there fewer of each, I think is a, I won't call you the perpetrator of a fatuous question, but to me, how well, can you I, say I know a, man a lot of women who say, you know, you just can't find a guy. They're either married, and it's, you don't oh. say it's a, Well, that's different. You can't find a guy because statistically they're not enough to go around. Right. They say but they're just not, they're either liars, uh, they're con artists. Uh, mm -hmm. They're married and they've taken their ring off. Um, I devoutly believe if you want to be married, and you're of a female persuasion, you can get married. I tell my young Cosmo readers, look, you may not be able to have a JFK Jr. or a Steven Spielberg. Would you kindly come off it with your requirements, honey? Because <laughs> <laughs> if you want a man, you can find one and you can find one who will commit to you, so get off my case. Is Cosmo too sexy for certain parts of the world? I mean, it, it does well in many countries. Roger, we're not too sexy for any part of the world, including the United States. Well, I would think Iraq States. would not be real pleased oh. with it, you know, I mean. <laughs> it wouldn't be the question of sex. I think it would be the question of equality. They're still running around in their veils and their gloves and their schmatzes. You can't see an inch of flesh except, where is it? I guess the eyes are really The eyes, yeah. Which... So, it's not just too sexy, but too liberated. But I sort of think nostalgically of the time when I had sex all to myself at Cosmo because no other woman's magazine would touch it. Well, now they've gotten kind of smart, <laughs> and so everybody is very sexy, and I'm not sure there's any such thing as too much sex anyway. I've known you've thought that for 30 years. I first met you in 1963 when you were on your book tour, and I was working on the Mike Douglas Show in Cleveland, Ohio, 
And it was shocking because the real question in that time was, can we really say sex and the single girl? And then one of the premises of, the, of that book, as I recall it, and maybe you can correct me because I haven't read it in 30 years, but was that if women get involved in the workplace, so what? I mean, if she f has sex with her boss, it's okay. And there were, uh, I remember what we used to call housewives, now homemakers, now whatever they are, who got outraged about this idea that it would be okay to fool around at the office. Have you ever backed off that statement or do you still believe it? Never, I don't call it fooling around. I call it making a connection with the opposite sex. And if you go in there at nine o'clock and come out at 9.30, as young women do who work on television shows and in television stations, you spend a great deal of your life, let's just say it's nine to five. Aren't you supposed to make connections while you're at the office? I have never, or the laboratory, or the TV studio, or the library, wherever you are, I have never pushed having sex with your boss, but if it turns out that you're having what would might be called an affair, if you're involved sexually, romantically, I think you can survive. You can both survive. You may have to go work in another department, but it's not the end of the world. I survived several office liaisons, and Roger, you and I are still here. That's true. Did David ever ask you about your past? He is so uninterested in my past, he would like me to shut up because he thinks other people are probably tired of hearing about my past really? as well. My advice for all younger women, not so young women, is that you don't talk about your romantic or sexual past with a man. A, it's none of his business. B, he'll probably be bored. C, men can't handle it. Men don't want to know for another reason. Can't handle it. They cannot so handle it. So just don't, don't want to hear do it. it. And no matter how much they ask you, nudge you, just say, here's the correct answer, if I may. Darling, it's so immaterial. A, there wasn't very much going on. B, you are the most wonderful lover in the entire world, the most wonderful person ever to come into my life. And we're not going to talk about anything that came before you because it doesn't matter. Uh, you're from Arkansas, and the president's from Arkansas. What about Arkansas? Are there Arkansas people? I came from Ohio. I can sort of describe what Ohio people are right, like. I mean, what, are there Arkansas-type people? Arkansas people are those who've been trying to get Arkansas recognized for many, many years. We've always been considered kind of a scruffy state, and we are so happy to have our own president, never mind that once in a while he gets into trouble or people don't always vote as they should, uh, uh, the crime bill, what, whatever, the health plan. but. Arkansas-ers, Arkansans, are perfectly nice, wonderful people who never got recognized very much except for just one or two. Are you saying they have a self-esteem problem in some of these states? They really do. I would say so. Arkansas was considered just funny. Hicks came from Arkansas. There was nothing good to say about Arkansas. My mother was born in West Virginia, and, and she has that problem about West Virginia. People say people who come from West Virginia uh, are hillbillies, and so she always had this this uh, sort of self-conscious feeling. But my f own feeling is that there's nothing like having come from Arkansas or Oklahoma or Missouri or West Virginia or wherever you came from because New York is ready for you. We're wide-eyed and we're ready to try to do something real good. We are so uh, respectful of the big city. We make wonderful big city people when we finally get here. Do, pe do people make too much of politicians' sex lives? My, own opinion, be, yeah. my own opinion is that, yes, they do. I thought it was correctly the situation. It was correctly handled during the Roosevelt regime. Truman, I think, was, what do I know? But we, we believe that he was faithful to Bess. Eisenhower, something else again. Probably undoubtedly had, a, had a, a wartime affair, we think. Lyndon Johnson, I believe, was not exactly uh, on the reservation. Well, he, the he, 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 he. My, ladies, like you ladies, my thought, and Kennedy, of course, my thought is that we were better off when we kind of didn't pay too much attention. It doesn't keep you from being a good president because you happen to be unfaithful. Am I pressing, pushing infidelity? No. I am trying to state reality, which is that infidelity doesn't cause you to blow up the United States or anything really disagreeable like that. Mm. Maybe faithfulness is better, but I have a theory that people who are really dynamic and big heavy hitters in the business world and the political world have all this sexual energy which is apt to go somewhere.
power and sex work together. Helen Gurley Brown will be back with more of that and other topics right after these messages. You're listening. We're all talking on America's Talking. When you bought your computer, you probably hoped it would become a serious financial tool, enabling you to better analyze the fast-changing world of business, helping you with your investing. Well, finally, that's about to happen, thanks to Prodigy. Now your computer can keep you on top of constantly shifting company news, give you continually updated market quotes, let you research thousands of stocks and funds anytime, day or night, even place an order to be executed at tomorrow's opening bell. You see, Prodigy is the online service that brings the world of investing right to your desk, just where you want it and when you want it, with no hassles in getting through, because we can handle millions of members' requests and transactions daily. Investors need to manage risk, and here's a no-risk way to try Prodigy for 10 hours free. Call this number for software, a month of membership, and 10 hours, all free. So spend a month with Prodigy and see if it doesn't become one of the most important tools for helping you make smart decisions. Get live on Prodigy by calling this number now. If you've ever struggled with a handheld trimmer, you'll love this revolutionary new kind of trimmer on wheels. Just look how easy it rolls on those two big wheels and glides in any direction on this front-mounted mobile. It's perfect for trimming around rocks, along fences, buildings, sidewalks, and in all those hard-to-reach corners. The new DR is also a mower. It cuts tall grass, waist-high weeds, even wet grass and rough areas with never-before ease. There's no steel blade to bend or dull. You'll just love what the DR Trimmer Mower can do for you and your property. Call toll-free 1-800-952-2626 for your big free package all about the revolutionary DR Trimmer on Wheels, plus special savings now in effect. That's 1-800-952-2626 for free DR details. back with a wonderful woman. Uh, she is the editor of Cosmopolitan Magazine, Helen Gurley Brown. And Helen and I have known each other for uh, many years. Uh, and she, the, the worldwide success of Cosmo, uh, the, in publishing, there are rarely success stories that can be attributed to a single person. I mean, you went into that magazine, what, in 65? And it was almost an instant success and stayed on top all these years. How did you do that when you're so nice? You're not like a tough, mean, are you different at work? Do you like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or something? Roger, Cosmo is real old. It's over 100 years old. But when I came in, it was going to It was going, it was going, going down. So I got a chance to do it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I was doing, which may have helped, because I didn't know what you couldn't do. There's a wonderful format that you can't argue with. It's a magazine for young women who love men and children. And they're feminine, and they're traditional in some ways, but they don't want to get their identity from being somebody's mother or wife or a football player's girlfriend or the rock musician's sister. They want to do something on their own. It's such an admirable, good format, and I haven't deviated from that 
from the first instant, then what makes Cosmo work? I believe, having been a little girl from Little Rock, we talked about that, been nowhere, very average IQ. No. That's not true, Helen. I'll, well, I'll tell you, I'll buy a... everything else, but your IQ is... But hillbilly relatives and no money, wall-to-wall -wall acne, sister in a wheelchair, no college education. I hit the deck running at 18. It took a long time to do whatever I did, but How much we did... tell... Okay, go ahead. Then I got tell, two quick We tell quarters. the women in Cosmo they can do it, so it's an inspirational magazine. Wherever you come from, hang in there, kiddo, work hard, Put the time in. Don't expect anybody to hand it to you, and you can do it. Plus, the writing is good. Plus, listen, plus. you were a very successful copywriter at a young age, and that is not easy. And you do need an IQ to do that. Roger wasn't a young age. I started working when I was 18 at radio station KHJ in Los Angeles, answering fan mail for six dollars a week, and I was 34 before I started writing. Advertising copy, it took a long time. Okay, what attributes your success? Well, scale of one to ten. Your common sense, how much did that count? I'd say about 9.4. Okay, <laughs> common absolute sense drive driven, uh, driven by the fact that you grew up poor and wanted to make it. How much, did, how important That's was That's another nine. That's a nine. Sex, use of sex to get ahead. Zero. None. Uh, use of sex to keep you uh, recreation, recreationally entertained so that you were comfortable enough to do your job. <laughs> I guess entertainment is one aspect of sex. I've always thought it was terrific. As I tell Cosmo's advertisers when they fuss at Cosmo being sexy, I say, well, it's one of the three best things there is, and I can't think what are the other two. <laughs> but I don't mean to show off or brag. For heaven's sake, I'm not a sex demon or maniac. I just think sex is one of the good things we have to enjoy, so why not go for it? Are Americans way too repressed on that topic? They don't talk about it much. We get we have a show on CNBC called Real Personal. Bob Berkowitz does it. He's a fine journalist, was a White House correspondent. His parents were psychiatrists, and he talks about sex on this show. And he talks about it not in a laughing, joking way, but very seriously. But they say uh, all the words. And I get Every morning when I come in, I get mail saying, get that off, and you should never mention those words on television and so on. Are we too repressed on it? We used to be repressed long, long years ago and into the 60s when I wrote Sex and a Single Girl, and as you said, you couldn't use the word sex on the air. We were pretty uh, stuffed up, but I think we've taken care of that, and on most television shows, I think now you can talk about sex. You don't have to perhaps do it quite as graphically as Bob does, but he's very entertaining for all the people who write in and complain about their thousands of others who are just out there enjoying, not complaining. Well, that is true. It's a very highly rated show on CNBC, and it does extremely well. Advertisers are very uncomfortable with it, however, because I don't know why that is. They think people who buy their products don't have sex, I guess. Advertisers get three letters saying, get that person off the air, or get that magazine off the newsstands and advertisers go berserk yeah. just a little noise from a constituent and they don't listen to their own voices are are women equal today in america are they, are they have they finally reached equality in your judgment we've always been equal in terms of brain Hard to tell that to now brain power common sense as i point out half the brains in the world belong to women so we've always been equal in terms of getting along in the world, surviving. No, I think you're superior at that, but, but, I know but there's what a whole group about. of women saying that women don't have equality. I know what you're talking okay. about, obviously, and we don't yet have parity in terms of money and pay on a particular job. He make make more than us, but we have now got the chance to get in there and show them. And if a woman is really, really good, and she's better than a man, She's the one who's going to finally get the money and stay employed. I think we do have a kind of equality. What we don't yet have are any CEOs and any numbers, just one woman who's with a Fortune 500 company who's a CEO, Linda Wachner. Not very many congressmen, senators, representatives, mayors, presidents yet, but we're getting there. Well, that's interesting because I want to talk about that. We have to take another break. but. Running for office is a little different. You have to go out and raise the money, and you have to really get in, commit, and run. And there aren't that many women who apparently want to do that yet, or because they, it's not that they're being defeated. When they run, they do reasonably well. I don't, for some reason, they're not drawn to it. 
Corporate life is a different matter. I think corporations are not necessarily telling the truth in many instances, and women simply are not paid as well, and I know that for a fact. We'll be right back after these messages. This is America's Talking. This program is sponsored by Sprint. Be there now with a local long distance and cellular provider. New is the key to conversation on AT. At 10, the newest late night host takes center stage. It's Roger Rose. At 11, it's a new way to let the world know what gets you mad, unbugged. And at midnight, we'll put the new in news with a two hour perspective on AT in depth. Tomorrow, we pay our respects to the king with a new book about the real Elvis. And we'll show you the latest in low fat, healthy gourmet beef. And also, supermodel Kim Alexis with a new toothbrush. Is she using this? Tomorrow on What's New with Mike Jarrett. America's Talking. It's more than talk, it's a conversation. America's Talking is a place to call in and be heard. America's Talking really keeps me in touch with what America's Talking about. I want to know what the rest of the country has to say. So I watch America's Talking. America's Talking. Join the conversation. Remember when Sprint's fiber optic network just meant a great phone call? That was a pin? Today you'll find that same Sprint clarity and high-speed data transmission. Worldwide video conferencing. Voice activated calling. That was a pin? And wireless communications. Only one company lets you be there with all this technology right now. So in case you were wondering... Are you a pin, Mr. Hall? Yes, that was a pin. We've got traffic back come up Come on, everywhere. come on. I've got to get out of here. Park Road is much slower. you thinking of? Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. How fast were you? You knew you were driving too fast. So how are you going to answer their questions? What's going to happen to Grandma? My grandfather was already an old man the first time I went fishing with him. My dad whispered, watch him cast. And I watched that line go out like a soaring bird. Where'd he learn to do that, I asked. From his father, my dad said, and from field and stream. And so it's been since 1895, when field and stream was first published. And now you can continue the tradition with this special TV offer. Call now and get 15 issues of the best in hunting, fishing, and outdoor recreation. Plus special news specifically for your area, all for this great price. Order now and you'll also get this great looking heavy duty field and stream field bag. Just the other day, I took my boy fishing for the first time. Call this number now for a great price on field and stream and get this roomy, sturdy field bag free with your paid subscription. Call now. talking with editor and author Helen Gurley Brown and if you'd like to talk to her we have a phone number if you'd like to call in and ask her a question the number is 1-800-988-TALK 1-800-988-TALK that was quick Gigi from New York is calling is this a real call Gigi you're on the line hello hello hi hi there <laughs> you have a question yes I do from Mrs. Helen Gurley Brown Go ahead. Oh, I see. All right. I have to turn my television off. It's too confusing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Brown. Good, good going. <clears throat> I want to know if you have any point of view about all these women who were complaining about sexual harassment on the part of men who were doing some little nonsensical thing, you know, and they're suing and they're making all kinds of fuss. What do you think about all this nonsense? Very strong opinion. I think those women are ridiculous. As we were saying, if you don't get the same amount of money for a job that a man is doing and you're being kept back from the top jobs, that's what I call sexual harassment. But for a man to say, 
gee, honey, you look real swell in that turquoise sweater. And she immediately goes to see the company attorney to enter a lawsuit. That's just crazy time. Let me, uh, okay, thank you, Gigi, for your call. If you want to talk to Helen, call us at 1-800-988-TALK. Uh, I'm going to, you say yes or no. I'm going to give you a set of circumstances, and you say yes, sexual harassment, no, not sexual harassment. Man or woman in the workplace, you look great. I'd love to take you out some night. Would you like to have dinner with me? Yes or no? Not sexual harassment, no. Oh, okay. Uh, you're very sexy. Man, you really look great in that dress. That's very sexy. Is that sexual harassment or no? getting along toward that line, but I just got to intercede and say, that never hurt anybody. He's not ripping your clothes off. He's not causing you a bad time. All you have to do is say, well, I'm glad you think I look sexy. And then you can go on and say, you know, I've got a boyfriend or I've got a father with a doesn't like this kind of talk, whatever you want to say, but you're not getting harmed because somebody says you look sexy. My daughter said a guy hit on her. She works in advertising as you did. And she said, what should I do? And I said, give him a quarter and tell him to call your dad and see if it'd be all right. <laughs> and, and then uh, if, uh, tell him if he'll do that, then everything will be fine. We're and not really fragile creatures, you know, we women. And most women who look good or made some not correct remarks, too. And it's not the end of the world. If a man really hits on you physically, that's sexual harassment. And I guess if he talks dirty to you all the time, maybe that's... Where were you on Anita harassment. Hill and Clarence Thomas? I know you're feminist, and I know you, therefore, because of your women friends and the parties you have to go to, you sort of have to be politically correct there. I felt she should have come out sooner. I think she was absolutely telling the truth. I thought it should have been told sooner. I never blamed her for hanging in with him because she didn't have too many other opportunities. So she was just trying to get on in the world. I think you can't have it both ways. You can't stay with him and accept the sexual innuendo and remarks and suggestions and then later on come out and say, oh gosh, was I mistreated. Mm hmm Okay, Karen from Iowa. Karen, you're on the line. Hi. Hi. I have a question for Helen. Okay. By the way, Helen, you look great. My Thank question you. is, how do you feel about women over 40 Wearing shorter skirts, uh, body forming clothes. You got legs like they... Helen, it's fine. Well, I want, I'm sorry Roger hasn't brought it up. The Late Show, it's my latest book. It has to do with not being as old as you are. If I may say so, I'm 72 and you ought to get a load of this skirt. It's about three inches. Get a wide shot, too. <laughs> Give me a wide shot on two. No, and I'm, I, I hate, to, check this out. hate to keep bringing myself into the conversation, but I think I'm a good example of what I think about older, really older women like me wearing short skirts. Uh, there's a shot of Go you on the screen it. there. We got your legs there, Helen. <laughs> okay. We got a shot. David, are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you look great. And uh, what uh, you, you wrote about also having sex over a certain age, right? And you said, uh, Maybe you don't do it as often when you're 70, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing it at all, right? I th that's what I said, and I think I may have offended some possible readers to my own detriment because I said the minute you stop having sex is what separates the old women from the young women. And if you keep on being a sexual creature, you'll never be old. Well, a lot of people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s got rid of sex a long time ago, and they don't want to be told that that's what makes you a viable older person, but that's my opinion. It's not that hard to have sex. What about a woman who's, say, 50, 60, her husband passes away, she loved him, but she, you know, is kind of lonely and so on, uh, she, but she doesn't want to go out to some one of these old folks' dances in her mind and try to pick up somebody. What, what does she do? Roger, all you can do is be very interested in whom you're having the pleasure of talking with. You look in his eyes, you talk, you listen like a maniac. That's a first step toward getting somebody interested in you. Obviously, you give a little party or two once in a while, ask some people in. They may not ask you, but you have something going at your house that they can come to. And all the other things that you can do, you do work for political candidates, you, you give, you reach out. You may be finding homes for puppies. There may be a litter of 10 puppies and you've got to get rid of seven of them for some young people down the block. Get out there and do it, whatever it is, and be interested. And then in say, by the way, while we're talking about these puppies, would you like to have sex? Is that... Roger, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a kidding. little longer. You gotta than... I know, it's the old look at the moon joke. I know. All right, Helen Gurley-Brown, uh, we're going to uh, come back with her one more time. If you have a question for Helen, 
You can call us at 1-800-988-TALK. That's 1-800-988-TALK, and we'll be right back in just a moment. Anyone can see that the GE Profile Radiant Convection Range is easy to clean, but the real technological advantage is what you can't see, so we'll show it to you in a roundabout way. This is the first GE range that circulates hot air all around your food, roasting meats up to 30% faster, so they get done to a turn on the outside while staying tender and juicy on the inside. Why does GE offer such an ingenious way to cook? Because we know how much of life revolves around dinner. I'm Jack Nicholas, and I've just joined Golf Magazine as special contributor. You can join Golf Magazine, too. Call now for Golf Magazine, and you'll also get absolutely free Jack's video, Playing the Percentages, an insider's guide to improving your game. Jack, it's great to have you on the Golf Magazine team. Where should we look for you in upcoming issues? Where else? The golf course. A sewing machine means clothing. Clothing means money. Money means food for a hungry family overseas. A well means clean water. Clean water means no dysentery. No dysentery means survival for an entire community overseas. A book means learning. Learning means knowledge. Knowledge means a chance for a better life for a child living in poverty overseas. As a Child Reach sponsor, you can help make all these wonderful things happen. You can help change the life of a family, a community, and a child with your friendship and generosity. For more information, call 1-800-826-1110. Child Reach Sponsorship. Who says you can't make a difference in the world? We're back. This is the book that uh, we talked about, Helen Gurley Brown, The Late Show. Is this out in the bookstores now? Can mm -hmm. they go get it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always ask because sometimes you go to bookstores and you can never find the book, and uh, so you have to yell at the publisher. A semi-wild but practical survival plan for women over 50. Uh, you were going to say women can find sex even if they're over 50. They... You just have to click on and say, I'm a sexual person. I'm not going to let them take that away from me. I want to have sex, and that's the first step. You deserve it, and then you go out and you don't call up a man and say, I'd like to see your Armani suit on my bedroom floor. You're much, <laughs> <laughs> much more subtle than that. You might ask a man to have lunch. It's possible. Just know that you, you look good enough. You may not look like Claudia Schiffer or Cindy Crawford or Michelle Pfeiffer, but you look okay. Man is not so interested in how you look as you might think that he is. He's interested in himself and how you make him feel. And I devoutly believe that an older woman can make a man feel very good about himself, particularly sexually. Okay. <laughs> I will, we'll accept that. What about... Uh, what? I have been told that all men have some kind of a hot button, that if you can figure it out what that guy likes, that, that you can trigger a sexual response in him. Is that true? Well, you have to be able to get into bed, I think, before that all comes into play. What men... What about verbally? Can't you say things that would make him oh, think because the rest of it's mental? Roger, that's too convoluted for me. It is. That's Just too, getting bad and... That's too subtle. No. Okay. You, you need to get somebody to go to bed with you, but if you mention... Uh, three blind mice or poison ivy climbing up the wall of the castle, mm -hmm. some trigger thing for him personally. I wouldn't be able to figure all that out. What gets him to bed is that you think he's very attractive mm -hmm. and you think any woman is lucky not only be in the same room with him, but to go to bed with him would be really incredibly wonderful, but you do all that quite subtly. Was your husband over the last 35 years ever really jealous about a guy? Did he ever get say, hey, I don't like that guy. The last two parties we went to, I watched him. He was watching you. Did he ever... I mean, never. Not once. Did that worry you that he never did? Well, 
Not really. I think he knew that I got all the sex and not all the sex, but all the affair, <laughs> <laughs> all the affairs I got out of my system before I married him in my late 30s. Mm -hmm. So I was ready to be a good girl. And it wouldn't matter how anybody came on to me or how I seemed to come on to somebody. He never pays the least bit of attention. He knows I'm going home with him. Were you ever worried? There must have been. He's a big movie producer. Must have been a lot of young women coming over, hitting on him. Uh, didn't that, did you ever walk over to him and say, hey, knock it off, get rid of her? No, I never had to do that. But in the early days before he married me, I worried because he's got the complete run of 20th Century Fox and all those starlets, and including Marilyn Monroe and Deborah Carr and a few other hotsy totsy ladies. And I worried during that period before he married me. Mm hmm Okay, we've got a call coming in from Florida. Mary, you're on the line. Mary? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, first of all, I have a comment and, and then a question. I just want to say that Helen Gurley Brown has been one of my idols, and um, she, Cosmo's been with me through a 20-year marriage and uh, the breakup of that marriage through alcoholism. It's been with me through a court case of uh, sexual discrimination, of which I'm one of the few women I think that have won. Um, and it's been with me the last four years while I've been single, so I'm really thrilled to be um, saying how much I admire her. Do you have a question for her? Yes, I do. Um, a lot of my friends have told me I should write a book, and I've written, started to write some articles for magazines, but my topics are kind of like delayed in time. It seems like you're just publishing a topic I'm just starting to write about. Are there any hot topics right now that basically you're looking to publish on a new, a new topic that maybe somebody like myself could get in on before it's written about? Mary, what works for us is to write your own story, something that is indigenous to you and nobody else can have had that experience. And it can be old fashioned. It could be about the breakup of your marriage. Whatever you know better than other people really works best for us with an unknown writer. Later, we might assign somebody to a somewhat esoteric subject. We might be writing now about the fundamentalists or about being gun crazy or about bigotry, some really heavy subject. But you don't need to do that going in. I would write about something a little bit simpler. Read the magazine, see about the kind of thing that they are publishing, and then you try to write something like that, particularly based on how you feel. If she won a sexual discrimination suit, that might be a... Very, very good point. That's something that many people haven't done. Write about why it worked for you, why you got the judgment, how you were different from others. And you sound like a very reasonable girl, especially since you like Cosmo. I'm, on, <laughs> I'm all for you. But apparently, your suit deserved to be won. Write about that. Okay, uh, Karen from Florida. Another call from Florida. Karen, you're on the line. Okay, thank you. Karen, are yes. you there? Yes. What, do you have a qu another question? No, uh, I would like to know uh, how I can meet somebody. I mean, I've been, I tried personal ads, I went to single dances, and uh, you name it, you know, but there's nothing out there. <laughs> uh, and I'm a good, a good see, woman. A I good have man my own condo. I'm self-supporting, you know. I'm not looking for somebody that, uh, rich. It would be nice if they have money, but, you know, that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a good partner. I wonder if any of the personal ads have been answered that she placed. Have you placed an ad and asked people to write to you or call you? Have you placed any personal ads, Karen? I think she went away. Well, that's what you do in life. I understand the personals work quite well. You just keep on doing what you're doing, and out there is somebody... If you, if you like men, I've been... we got four before. guys in this studio that are a little lonely. You know, these cameramen and the four guys? <laughs> you ought to come up to New York. You could hit on these guys. They won't turn you in. <laughs> I hear the control room. <laughs> sure. No. Uh, see, I, I think there are a lot of people who are lonely. Are women over 50 insecure about how they look, and does that cause them to be reticent about approaching a man? Men are less I insecure. Men are egotistical until they lower them into the old ground. I mean, they're, you know, their egos stay with them. Sometimes I think women get more insecure about their looks. That's a whole new subject, and I get to come back someday about how okay. women feel regarding their looks. I think nearly everybody, about 84.7% of women, are insecure about something. Hips too big, legs too wide, bosom too flat. 
So that just goes with the territory. It gets a little worse when you're over 50, but you can beat the rap. You really can. <laughs> okay, Helen Gurley Brown, and the book is The Late Show. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back uh, in just a moment with the daughter of two Motown legends, singer Rhonda Ross. Stay with us. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>